Michigan handling business yesterday in the big house over Indiana. Final score was 52 to 7. Michigan now just kind of rolling right along. Very comfortable being the third page of the newspaper. Oh, hey, look, Michigan blew somebody else out. A lot of people are kind of just looking at that, not bothering to read the story or read the box score or go back and watch the game and just saying, good for Michigan, on to the next. We're not going to do that here. We're actually going to talk about this game. We're going to talk about what we learned from this game because Michigan, I think, has a very real case to be the best team in the country. If you have Georgia number one, that's fine. You have Michigan number one, that's fine. But I think Michigan needs to be very firmly in that conversation. We'll talk about yesterday's game right now. Before we do that, though, Michigan fans, had a lot of y'all join the party recently. We want you subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel, College Football, every single day. The hard count is live three times a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. We've got content every single day on this channel. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at JD Pakel. Let me know what y'all think of what you've seen so far from your Wolverines. Yesterday, we saw Michigan show some real composure. Because we know this, too, with Michigan. Like, everybody that lines up against Michigan, it's their Super Bowl. It's their Super Bowl. And that's not to talk down on Indiana or anybody else that Michigan plays, but like Michigan is the big dog in that conference. And you saw Indiana pull out the double pass to throw in the kitchen sink at them to try and find a way to get some leverage and find a way to pull off the upset. And they connected, to be quite frank. I mean, like they, they threw the first punch and they drew first blood to Indiana. And so for Michigan, you're kind of wondering like, all right now, what's going to happen next? How are they going to respond to that kind of approach from Indiana? Michigan, to their credit, responded exactly how I think a lot of us would expect a team of their experience level to respond. No panic. Took care of business. Ran it up. And, and once you know, like the, the reserves are playing in the fourth quarter. That was how this whole thing shook out. But the composure of what we saw yesterday, I think maybe it's not a, a bullet point. Maybe it's not a headline, but I think it's something to at least keep an eye on. A footnote, if you will, to see Michigan handle that kind of situation and handle it with ease and the big reason why they handle it with ease now is what they have offensively like there's a lot made about Michigan and the way they play offensively they're ground and pound they control the line of scrimmage and so when you see that happen the tendency for people in their brains is to say oh that's what Michigan does they run the football they must not have any weapons in the pass game Y'all, if we're thinking Michigan doesn't have any firepower offensively in the passing game, we're just not really watching Michigan. Because I think Colston Loveland is quietly one of the best tight ends in the conference. I think quietly he's one of the better tight ends ability-wise in the country. He's a chess piece. We saw him do some really good things yesterday, especially on that rollout where J.J. McCarthy extended the play and he hits Colston Loveland downfield and Colston Loveland does the rest. But like, Roman Wilson as well, the, the, the way that he has elevated his game this season. There's going to be some guys that become a little bit more nationally known in November by nature of the games that Michigan plays and maybe even by nature of the style of offense Michigan plays in those games. So just because they don't have to stretch the ball downfield quite as much right now doesn't mean they don't still have that firepower offensively. We saw, we saw spurts of it yesterday. But I think there's much more under the hood. It's just encouraging if you're a Michigan fan to see them rev the engine a little bit. And a big reason why they can rev the engine, the big reason why they can elevate those skill players, J.J. McCarthy, he looks so in control this year. And he was in control last year, but like he went from, I think, being the quarterback last year and eventually winning the starting job and probably being the guy by the end of the year. But like he's very firmly the owner and operator of that offense like he made some some ownership plays yesterday I mean you could tell I me mean, J- Jim Harbaugh said it post game he's like we feel confident because we got a generational talent at quarterback I'm thinking I'm paraphrasing but that's essentially what he said he's like he's one of the one of the best to come through here Jim Harbaugh knows quarterbacks man he's coached a lot of good ones I don't think he's just inviting that pressure on J.J. McCarthy just to invite pressure and to make J.J. McCarthy feel good like I think he genuinely means that And I'll go back to that play we talked about a second ago. J.J. McCarthy drops back, breaks contain, rolls out, and just there was never any sense of panic, never any look of jitteriness, just looked calm, cool, collected, rolls out, throws to his man, Colston Loveland, touchdown. Like, it it was that simple. Fourth down, little RPO look, gets the look he wants on his second read. Roman Wilson streaking across wide open, deliver the football, touchdown. No panic, fourth down, red zone, like, 
Just very, very cool, calm, and collected. And like I said, it is very, very clearly his offense. And it is very clearly, I think, starting to evolve as he continues to take ownership of that offense. And so when they get to November, we talk about it a lot. When they play Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State, and that three-game stretch, like we're going to learn a lot about this football team. But I think you feel, I think, even more confident than you did a season ago because of who you have playing quarterback and the skill set that he brings to the table. Now, there's very few people that are going to be talking about Michigan extensively in the college football media world. And that's totally fine because we're going to talk about him here. That's the first part. The other part is I think Michigan is totally fine with that too. They're, they're more than happy to go under the radar and there's going to be a lot of talk about disrespect, but like Michigan, one, they're used to it. They're used to kind of playing second fiddle and oh yeah, we're just, hey, we're, we're number two over here with second best team in the country. Oh yeah, no, hey, favor, talk, talk, talk about Penn State, talk about Ohio State, like hey, we're just two-time defending conference champs, don't worry about us. And one, they're used to it. Two, I think they thrive on it. I think they love that fuel. I think they love that energy. I think they love that that uh, chip on their shoulder that they can really lean into. Because I don't know there's quite as many people doubting Michigan that were doubting them last year because of what they've done the last two years, but they don't have a ton of intrigue. And we said it on a video last week, like, dominance is kind of boring. <laughs> dominance doesn't really divide the room. There's not much to unpack with dominance. In Michigan, they've been dominant to this point. So when you're dominant, people take a look at the box score and say, oh, good for Michigan, good win. We'll check back in November. All right, that's fine. That's totally fine. We'll just keep on rolling here and we'll see what happens. And, you know, maybe you'll check back and, and see that game, the last game of the year against Ohio State. Maybe then we'll uh, we'll get everybody's attention. That's probably the way that you feel if you're Michigan. Also, a lot going to be made about the schedule they play. And I understand the non-conference deal. Like, it is what it is. But Blake Corum didn't design that schedule. J.J. McCarthy didn't design that schedule. The guys that are actually executing on the field, it's a nameless, faceless opponent every single week for them, and they're playing like it. And that's the way they need to play the rest of the way to continue to improve and build to November to be able to play their best against the Penn States and the Ohio States. And I also think when you talk about their schedule in terms of conference play, like people are talking about, well, they, they throttled Nebraska, they throttled Indiana. Like, is it Michigan's fault that those teams aren't holding up their end of the deal? Is it Michigan's fault that Indiana's down, that Nebraska's on a, on a rebuild? Like, Whose fault is it that those teams aren't up to top 25 caliber at this point in time? It's not Michigan's. Michigan's just handling business, and they know in November, that's when their season will be defined. But again, Michigan, dominant over Indiana. J.J. McCarthy, total control. I'm seeing the evolution of his game and seeing the evolution of this offense. It's very subtle. It's very small at this point in time because of the way that they're dominating teams, but... Keep an eye on Michigan, and uh, in November, I promise you, there'll be a lot of people talking about them. Make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Judy Pacquiao. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time.